What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the best budget or lower cost x86 handheld device that I found on the market so far. Obviously, what we have here is the first generation of the ROG Ally. Now, this isn't the one with the Z1 Extreme. This is the one with just the Z1. So we've got six cores and 12 threads. And you might be thinking to yourself, yeah, we've seen this before. It's not a great performer. And yeah, at the price point this initially launched at, it definitely wasn't a good performer, especially with Windows installed, early drivers and everything like that. Another thing you might notice here is that I don't have Windows installed. We're actually using Bazai OS, which is very similar to the Steam DAG. And the last thing, when I say budget, I mean, these things are actually going on sale quite a lot. We've seen really low prices on them. But recently, at my local Best Buy, I was able to pick this up for $224. Now, it is a used version, so it was return. It was a fair condition, but I mean, it looks brand new to me. I don't see any scratches on the screen or anything like that. And with a price point like this, I'd say up to $250 with Bazai OS installed. I do think that this would be worth picking up if you don't already have an x86 handheld. If you've been looking to pick up something cheap, you can run emulators on this all day long. And it even plays PC games at a pretty decent frame rate. Now in this video, we're actually going to be taking a look at a few different scenarios that we could use the Z1 version of the Ally in. And obviously, we're not going to be testing out Windows here. We've got Bazite, very similar to the operating system that comes on the Steam Deck. And Bazite fully supports the Z1 and Z1 Extreme Ally, or even the newer ROG Ally X. And when this initially launched, we did take a look at it on the channel. Performance was really subpar when you compare it to the Z1 Extreme version, but prices weren't that far off from each other, and really when it comes down to it, it's the iGPU in this unit. When comparing the Z1 to the Z1 Extreme, yeah, we do get less CPU cores, 6 and 12 on the Z1 as opposed to the 8 and 16 on the Z1 Extreme, but the big difference here is that GPU. So it's based on RDNA 3, and we only get 4 compute units as opposed to the Z1 Extreme's 12 compute units. In real world Windows performance coming down to gaming, this falls far behind the Z1 Extreme, but with recent updates and the fact that we can install Linux here that's fully supported by this system, right here with Bazai, we've got full TDP control, we've got a quiet mode, balanced performance mode, and a custom mode. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at some 15 watt gaming performance, and I really wanted to kind of compare this to the Steam Deck's performance. And as we know, with the Steam Deck, most of those games are kind of meant to be run at 30 FPS. I want to see what this thing can do, but then we're going to take it up and see, you know, at a higher wattage, what we can really do in Linux with this Z1 ROG Ally. One thing I'd like to mention here is I have updated the BIOS and the firmware. When I originally got this from Best Buy, I did start it up inside of Windows. I just updated everything. I'm not worried about the drivers, just the firmware. You can always do this from USB. You can head over to the ASUS website and download everything you need. But the firmware, BIOS, everything is fully up to date. For my testing here, I'm just going to leave it stationary. Got an Xbox controller connected. If we head into the settings, I want to show you that this is really that Z1 non-extreme chip. So if we go to our system, Right here, you can see AMD Ryzen Z1, 6 cores, 12 threads. We've got 16 gigs of LP DDR5 running at 6400, and that RDNA 3 based iGPU with only 4 compute units. So far with this unit, Bazai has been working out really well. We've got full TDP control up to 30 watts, and with a lot of this stuff, we're going to be running it at 15. Then we're going to jump over to my game capture and we'll take it up to 25 just to see exactly what we can get out of this. I'm going to test in between there with a few other games because we definitely want to take a look at battery life also. And we've got a desktop mode, really easy to install, and I just used the 512 gigabyte SSD that came installed in this unit. USB drive, flash this over, totally erased Windows from it. So first game we have here is Cyberpunk 2077. We're at a 15 watt TDP. We can see total battery draw over on the side, everything that's going on with this Z1 chip. And I've got it set up just like I would on the Steam Deck. So we're using the Steam Deck preset. We're at 1280 by 800 and I've got it locked at 30 FPS. Of course, this is a 16 by 9 screen, so 1280 by 720, 720p would be the way to go. Or 900p when you up that wattage. But just to kind of give you an idea of how this performs against the Steam Deck, I just kind of wanted to set it up like I would on the Steam Deck. And yeah, at a 15 watt TDP, we can run this game at 30 FPS all day. Taking that wattage up will get us more out of it. 
But of course, a lot of people would be worried about battery life with a device like this. And we're actually only pulling 22.1 watts from the battery right now. And just to kind of even everything out, we're going to go down to 720p because we've got a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Obviously, still going to run at that 30 FPS and it's locked down. So 15 watts, looking pretty decent here. And if you don't mind playing games like this at 30 FPS and you can pick one of these up cheap, then it might be a pretty decent option. Now, I wouldn't run out and buy one of these at full price. I think right now they're still $3.99 brand new. But every other week at Best Buy and other stores, I've seen these go on sale. Not as low as a used one in fair condition, but definitely keep an eye out for open box on Best Buy. Uh, you can check locally and sometimes they will ship these. It just really depends on what they've got. Moving over to something a bit easier to run, Hades 2. And remember, we've got a 120 hertz display here. It does support free sync. Right now, we're still at a 15 watt TDP, but total battery draw is around 17 watts. But we can take that draw down because, I mean, obviously, a lot of people really don't need to play this game at 120 hertz. We can drop it down to 60. We could also disable the RGB on the unit. And now, even with that screen brightness set at 100%, we're drawing up to around 12 watts of power from the battery. But these easier to run indie games are going to run just fine on this system. It'll also handle GameCube, Wii, PSP, it'll do PS2. Some PS3 games are going to be playable here. I mean, we've got a much more powerful CPU here than we do with the Steam Deck. And with PS3 emulation, really does kind of rely on that CPU. A couple extra cores here and there don't hurt either. Next one we have here is Spider-Man Miles Morales. We're locked at 30, but we've got a 1080p resolution and we're at medium settings. Still at that 15 watt TDP, no frame gen, but I am using the IGTI scaler. Personally, I like using that over FSR and it's set to balanced right now. And we're getting a pretty steady 30 FPS out of this unit at 15 watts. So it's definitely not running at 120 FPS with this little chip here. And that iGPU is going to hold you back even at the higher wattages. But again, you know, if you don't mind playing at these lower frame rates with the decent variable refresh rate display, some of the stuff looks really, really good. Now I'm going to swap over to my game capture just to make it a bit easier on myself. And we're going with something a bit older, but still a game I personally like to play. Dirt 3 Ultra Settings 1080p, still 15 watts here. So we're over 60 and I mean, this game is still so much fun. I absolutely love it. I usually test this on really low end Intel chips because it's such an old game that it does run on basically anything. But with those, we do still have to drop the resolution down. And most of the time, take those settings down below. Everything we've seen so far running on this Z1 Ally in Bazai has been at a 15 watt TDP, but we can go much higher. This will do up to 30, but for the next games here, we're actually going to be testing at a 25 watt TDP. Back to Spider-Man Miles Morales, we're at 1080p medium settings, frame gen on. We're using FSR 3 frame gen. Not too bad. I mean, we're over 60. And to tell you the truth, going into this game, I figured it was going to perform much, much worse than this. Frame gen on these iGPUs does work out at a higher wattage. If I was to turn frame gen on at 15 watts right now, we wouldn't get great performance. Next up, we've got The Witcher 3 at 1080p, medium settings, and I'm using dynamic resolution scale. So I actually do like the way it works with this game here. You can set your desired frame rate and it's going to try its hardest to get up there, but it doesn't drop that resolution way, way down. As you can see, I mean, it still looks pretty decent here. And right now this is connected to an external capture card. If this was running on the built-in screen of the Ally, I mean, we've got that much smaller display. It looks really good even at lower resolutions. For the most part on this Z1 Ally, I've been running a lot of stuff at 720p just on that built-in screen. This one here was really impressive. I know it's an older one, it's Doom Eternal, but we're at 1080 medium with dynamic resolution scale. 
I've actually got the FPS set to 90, and with it set to 90, it's kind of hard pressed to go under. I mean, every once in a while, you'll see a dip right under 60, but overall, I mean, it's a great performer on this little handheld. And finally, back to Cyberpunk 2077. Right now, we are using AMD's frame gen, so they added FSR 3 and frame gen. It's at 1080 all low settings. It's not just the preset. I actually went in, manually turned everything down to low. It's pretty playable like this, and if you're not into frame gen, what you could do is set this at a locked 45 FPS. FSR 2.1, balance, 1080, low settings does a pretty decent job like that, but I kind of wanted to see what we could do with these newer technologies, and it really isn't all that bad. Now, I wanted to talk about battery life, and what you're seeing on screen right now is that a 25 watt TDP, screen brightness is set to 50%, and we've got the RGB off. So with this game here, it looks like we're pulling around 36 watts from the battery. I also tested at a 15 watt TDP with an easier to run indie game. We've got that 40 watt hour battery, screen brightness set to 50%, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth on. At a 15 watt TDP, around 22.4 watts in total drawn from the battery, so we're looking at around 1 hour 47 minutes. At a 25 watt TDP, pulling around 36 watts from the battery, so one hour and five minutes. And at a 10 watt TDP, playing easier indie games like 2D stuff, Shredder's Revenge, it's pulling around 12.5 watts, so you can get around two and a half hours of runtime playing indie games on this thing. Overall, with Bazai installed on the Z1 ROG Ally, it did work out much better than I thought it would. And if you can pick this up for a much lower price, under 250, then it might be worth it to some people. In fact, you know, we've been seeing a lot of these uh, retro handhelds hit the market with ARM CPUs. You know, they've got like 4.8 inch screens going for $199 brand new. I would pick one of these up over that every single day because I know with this, we're going to be able to do all of the emulators that that thing can, plus PC games like you saw in this video. But I wouldn't run out and buy one of these non-extreme versions for full price. I'd say $250 would be the max that I'd pay for something like this, and it has to be in really good condition. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I figured I'd go ahead and make this because I was kind of impressed by what this thing can do with Bazai, given that it's the non-extreme version of the Z1. We're not getting the best performance on the market, but for the price point I paid, I think it's a pretty decent deal. If you've got any questions or you want to see anything else running on this handheld, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.